Have you ever had a favorite card or just a really awesome combo you saw that you just wanted to build a deck around and make it work, but the naysayers tell you that that card's just not competitive enough and it can't cut it? Me too. That's the entire basis of my channel and exactly why I started creating content, because I wanted to make the cards and combos that I found fun and exciting competitive in some way so that I could actually enjoy my climb through the ladder every season. I make it to Mythic almost every season, and I play nothing but jank, so if I can do it, so can you, with these seven simple steps. Step one, find the card or combo that you wanna build around. Finding a card or combo to play around is the easy part. It's the deck building that can be the daunting task. Especially with how unforgiving the meta can be sometimes, building a deck on your own that can actually keep up with that format can sometimes just feel almost impossible. And you find yourself watching videos like mine or other content creators or digging around on various websites on the internet and clicking copy and paste to find something that actually works. Hopefully I can help you find a way to bring back that core element of magic, which is building decks and having fun with them. So for that end, today we're gonna to be using Lich Knight's Conquest, which is a card that I love and I've always loved, and I'm gonna to try to build a deck around it today for you guys and explain my process. Step two, decide which archetype best supports your idea. If we wanna play this card in a deck, we have to figure out what archetype we're gonna be playing. Are we control? Are we aggro? Mid-range? Combo? All four? No, I'm just kidding, you can't be all four. But we can be two, and in this case, we will be two. This is essentially a combo mid-range deck. So we are gonna build the deck with a mid-range style in mind, meaning that we're going to be playing removal and high value cards at every point in the curve and then eventually using those things to combo kill by getting a bunch of stuff back from our graveyard with Lich Knight's Conquest and hopefully ending the game on the spot. Step three, figure out which cards or mechanics are best gonna support the idea you've come up with. Now that we've decided we're gonna build around Lich Knight's Conquest, we have to figure out which cards and mechanics are best gonna support this so that we can build a competitive and viable deck. So Lich Knight's Conquest says four and a black, it's a sorcery, and says sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So what we're looking to do is set up a situation where we have enough artifacts, enchantments, or tokens to sacrifice to get a whole bunch of stuff back from our graveyard all at once and potentially win the game on the spot. We need a few things to make this work. We need things that generate tokens and or enchantments or artifacts that are easy to sacrifice and provide us some amount of value outside of just being something to sacrifice for Blitch Knight's Conquest. We also need big scary things to get back from our graveyard to pay off for Lich Knight's Conquest. And then we also need to find ways to get things into our graveyard so that we can get them back with Lich Knight's Conquest. Now that we've finished the first three steps, we can actually start working on building the deck. The first thing I'm gonna do is find the things that I want to get back. What is my combo? What am I doing with Lich Knight's Conquest that is gonna end the game? And the first thing that comes to mind is Terror of the Peaks. If we get one or a couple of copies of Terror of the Peaks onto the battlefield, that deals a whole bunch of damage directly to our opponent's face. So we'll start by adding four copies of this. Terror of the Peaks is a fantastic combo piece because it's not an unreasonably difficult to cast card. So even if we don't have Lich Knight's Conquest, this is something that we can reasonably cast and just play it as a threat. But being able to get it back with Lich Knight's Conquest later can be a huge combo. The next card that comes to mind is Trumpeting Carnosaur. The reason I think about Trumpeting Carnosaur is because, again, it's a card that's not unreasonably high cost. It's six mana, so it's something we could cast. And the fact that we can discard it to deal damage to a creature or planeswalker makes it a removal spell that also puts it into the graveyard for us to reanimate with our Lich Knight's Conquest later. That's exactly what we're looking for in this deck. Now that we've selected some threats, I think I'm gonna top it off with Atali. Atali is definitely a card that's a little bit harder to cast, so we're only gonna include two copies of Atali in this deck, but being able to discard this and get it back alongside of a Terror of the Peaks can be game ending all by itself. The same thing with Trumpeting Carnosaur, being able to get us 
terror of the peaks because it has discover five so all of these things can kind of cascade into each other even if we can only get back one carnosaur or one atali we can kind of cascade into all the other stuff and still combo kill our opponent with damage from terror of the peaks or just build a board that our opponent can't deal with now we need to find the cards that are going to help support this strategy and make sure that we have things to sacrifice to lich knight's conquest to get these cards back as well as helping us discard them and get them into the graveyard one of the first cards that comes to mind is Case of the Stash Skeleton. Case of the Stash Skeleton is a great card in this deck because it provides us with both a token and an enchantment, which can both be sacrificed to Lich Knight's Conquest later. And our opponent really doesn't want to kill the token that badly because it allows us to sacrifice the case to go find a card. So maybe we go find that Lich Knight's Conquest that we need or any other card that we need to help support our combo. We need a card that can help us discard things out of our hand and get it into the graveyard while also providing us something to sacrifice later to our Lich Knight's Conquest. Brass's Tunnel Grinder fits this perfectly. It allows us to discard any number of cards and then draw that many cards plus one. And then we can put a boar counter on it if we've descended this turn. Now, the only downside to this is it can flip into a land, so we do want to try to avoid flipping it into a land, but it's not the worst if it does flip into a land because we still get to discover every time we cast any spell, which can be quite useful. I'm also going to include a couple copies of Urbrask's Forge in the deck because it's an artifact itself and it provides us with a token every turn and the token gets exponentially bigger so this card can help win us the game on its own. It creates a token that deals damage with Terror of the Peaks so it gives us a way to win even if we can't find our combo. I also like a single copy of Matt Zelanti, The Great Door. It's a three mana artifact that says we can tap it to draw a card and then discard a card. And then we can pay four to transform it if there are four or more permanent types among cards in our graveyard, which shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and it's an artifact that we can sacrifice even after we draw and discard. So it helps us get cards out of our hand and into our graveyard to reanimate. I'm also going to include four copies of Thran Spider because it's a good blocker. It has reach, so it can help us deal with pesky flying creatures, and it provides a power stone, which we can use to sacrifice or pay costs that are not related to casting spells. And finally, I'm going to include a couple of copies of Blood Splatter Analysis because it's an enchantment, so we can sacrifice it. It's a removal spell, so it helps us kill something on the battlefield, and it mills a card off the top of our library every time a creature dies. This card is an all-star in a deck like this because it provides us value on all the fronts that we need. It gives us a way to remove a creature, it gives us something to sacrifice to Lich Knight's Conquest, and it helps fill our graveyard. Step four, finding a balanced mana base. Finally, we want to take a look at our mana base. We want to make sure that we have enough lands to cast our spells, and we want to make sure that we have the right distribution of colors in our land base. Now, thankfully, this particular deck is pretty simple because we have a lot of red cards and a lot of black cards, so it should be about even on the black and red side, but we do want to make sure that we do regularly have black and red available on turn two so that we can cast blood splatter analysis if necessary so let's go ahead and take a look at our black red lands we can afford to play something like raucous theater as a tap land because we don't really have any one drops this also gives us surveil which can help us put cards into our graveyard if we need to so it's a very valuable asset in a deck like this Black Cleave Cliffs is a dual land that comes in untapped as long as we control two or fewer lands and is an auto include in the deck like this. We'll also go ahead and add three copies of Sulphurous Springs. Even though it deals the damage to us when we tap it, it gives us another untapped source that produces both black and red. As far as other lands that are not black and red go, I'm going to include one single copy of Cavern of Souls to put on Dinosaur or dragon if we need to cast our dragon just to give us a way to cast things through control decks and give us a way to avoid those counter spells we're also going to play a single copy of murex as it's a way for us to repetitively produce artifact tokens that we can use to sacrifice the lich knight's conquest if for some reason we run out of gas and we need to be creating tokens in case we do top deck our combo piece. And that leaves us with four swamps and six mountains. There's a little bit more basic lands than I would like for the deck, but unfortunately, moving forward into rotation, we are losing the slow lands, so we lose out on four lands that we could be adding to this deck. But I wanted to make sure that the deck was rotation proof so that we were building something that we could actually play once we decided to move into Bloomboro. Step five, take a look at the meta. See which decks are performing well, 
and which decks may be strong or weak against your strategy. Now that we have a deck built and our idea is solidified, it's important that we go ahead and take a look at the meta. You can use any site that you like for this, whatever your preference is. I personally like to use untap.gg as the site for my perusing of the meta because it just makes things simple. It's easy to understand. We get to see the win rates of those decks and how well they're performing. So today it looks like mono red aggro, Boros Convoke, Azorius Control, Mono White Humans, Mono White Pro or Mono Red Prowess, Mono Blue Tempo, Mono Black Aggro, and Golgari Midrange. So with us being a graveyard based mid-range combo deck our biggest struggle is going to be against aggro decks because if they can just kill us faster than we can get to what we're doing, then we don't get to play the game. With Mono Red Aggro and Boros Convoke being the two highest win rate and most popular decks played today, we do want to make sure that when we're looking at our deck that we have ways to deal with early threats from these and easy ways to block those creatures to survive into the late game so that we can cast our big bombs and get our combo. Azorius Control is a little bit difficult for us to deal with, but thankfully most of their board wipes don't do anything against us because we're not planning on reanimating a lot of those creatures until we are ready to combo and as long as we can play around their counter spells we should be good most of the rest of the decks that are in the meta are either fringe aggro or mid-range decks and shouldn't be too much trouble for us step six see if there's any ways you can shore up those weaknesses or take advantage of the strengths that you've found looking at the meta now that we've had a chance to take a look at the meta we want to make sure that there's no ways that we can shore our deck up to make it better against the things that we're either strong or weak against. In this case, we want to make sure that we have at least some way to deal with the aggro decks that are out there as they are the most popular and the most successful decks in the format right now. We have four copies of Blood Splatter Analysis, which deal three damage, which should hit most of the cards and creatures in those four, in those decks. We also have four copies of Trumpeting Carnosaur, which we want to be discarding to deal three damage at instant speed and getting it into the graveyard, which is nice. I decided to add four copies of Charming Scoundrel after taking a look at the meta because this gives us a way to either create a treasure token which if we need to we can sacrifice the lich knight's conquest or it can help us ramp into some of our more mid-rangey creatures and help us put up a wall against those aggro decks a little bit faster it also has the benefit of being able to discard a card and draw a card which can help us get our big threats into the graveyard a little faster and the fact that we have three four thran spiders in the deck means that we have a good blocker most of the time on turn three if we're not casting a removal spell so i think we should be pretty good against those aggro decks we are playing a single cavern of souls to help us cast our creatures through counter spells unfortunately there are no cards that make instants and sorceries uncounterable but sometimes you just have to roll the dice but i think that with the small change that i made that the deck ends up being very good against most of the meta and as long as we survive to turn four or five we should be doing something fun and exciting with this deck step seven time to test and adjust you're in the final stretch all that's left now to do is play the deck and have fun that's what we built it for after all. See which cards are overperforming or underperforming. How does the deck feel against those top meta decks? Make sure that you're taking the time to fine tune the deck until you find that sweet spot where it's just right. Building decks around the cards you love doesn't have to be impossible and it's absolutely worth the time and effort involved in doing it, as all the games that you win will feel that much better knowing that you crafted the deck with your own hands and your own ideas. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you found this information helpful and inspired you in any way, make sure you take a moment to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, as all those things greatly help me, and I appreciate every single one of you for making it this far with me today. As a bonus, I decided to include one of the fun games I have with this deck after I built it. Enjoy. All right. E. Kendall 68. Art thou ready for our combo? One goes first. We've got a... Uh, we don't have any black mana. This is better. Um... Keep six, I think we put back Forge. Want for the opponent. There is a conquest. Uh, it's not a land. We need lands. So now we just need lands. There's a land. Alright. 
Let's go ahead and play Charming Scoundrel. We'll discard the Atali and draw a card. Carnosaur, nice, because we can use discard that. Mistress Foundry for the opponent and a Liliana of the Veil. To make us sacrifice our thing. When I How rude. Thankfully, we can get rid of... Actually, let's go ahead and play Raucous Theater. I'm okay with Forge. Let's play Case of the Stash Skeleton. And then, depending on what the opponent does, we can just discard the Carnosaur to the Lily Trigger. And then kill the Liliana with the skeleton. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather forget. And we're just one mana away from casting this uh, conquest, so. Alright, gonna play Mountain. Let's go ahead and play Urbrask's Forge. Make us sacrifice our thing, that's okay. Well, it can make us discard a card, but we'll just discard the Thran Spider. Looks like the opponent's thinking about whether or not they want to discard. Oh no! They rankles pranked us! Oh, that's so upsetting. Well, we get to kill the Liliana, right? We sacrifice this, go fetch another Lich Knight's Conquest, and hope that they don't have... ...another Prankles Prank in hand. Swamp, and Aklazoth. We're okay with Aklazoth. And we find the land, nice. Alright. No attacks. Let's well, Lich Knight's Conquest, sack, sack. Get back Atali and Carnosaur. Take the Archfiend to the draws. Take the Scoundrel. Uh, discard and draw. The land. And then Carnosaur into Thran Spider. That feels pretty good to me. What you got, opponent? What's your last card? <laughs> GG.